look at this problem. How would you solve it? I know for me, I normally would solve it like this, showing my work. I would be saying each thing I did. But what if I showed you a different way you could show your work? That's called proofs. And today we're going to introduce them on geometry. I'm your teacher, Mr. Peacock. So before we can know about proofs, we have to know what proofs are, or at least a little bit of an introduction. So when you solve algebraic equations, you're using deduction. If you want to remember the idea of inductive and deductive reasoning, there was a prior video about this. I'll have a link up here if you're looking at it online. Uh, you can use properties to support your reasoning without having to actually prove that those properties are true. Kind of like undefined terms, properties are just things that we accept. We don't have to prove. So let's talk about some of those properties. The building blocks of proofs. Our first one is the addition property of equality. It's basically saying if two things are equal, if A equals B, then if I add the same amount, it should remain equal. So if A equals B, then A plus C is going to still be the same as B plus C because we're adding the same amount to two equal things. Next, we have the subtraction property. If A is equal to B, then A minus C is going to be equal to B minus C. So if I have two equal things and I take out the same amount, they should remain equal. Next, the multiplication property. If A is equal to B, then if I multiply both parts by the same amount, they should stay equal. If A equals B, then A times C is equal to B times C. Finally, the division property of equality. If A is equal to B, then A divided by C is going to be equal to B divided by C. This is kind of the same as all the other ones. As long as we're doing the same thing to both sides, they should remain equal. Also, as long as C doesn't equal zero because you cannot divide by zero. All right, next we're going to talk about the reflexive property of equality. A equals A. If something, if something is on one side and the other and they're the same, then they are obviously equal. If I see X on one side of an equation and X on the other, I know that that X value is the same on both of them. I can trust that. Next, the reflexive property of congruence. If we have two line segments that are the same, so if I say line segment AB, it has to be congruent to itself. This is going to be very important once we get to geometry. Geometric proofs, we're in geometry. Next, the symmetric property of equality. If A is equal to B, then B has to be equal to A. So if I tell you that, um, that the, a piece of pie is equal to $5, then $5 is equal to the piece of pie. Next we have the symmetric property of a congruence. So in this case, if I have two line segments, if I say line segment AB is congruent to CD, so they both have the same length, then CD has the same length as AB. If this seems really obvious to you, that's because, once again, these are the properties. These are the things we don't have to prove. Next, the transitive property of equality. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. We don't need that middleman. Since they're both equal to B, they have to be equal to each other. Next, we have the transitive property of congruence. If we have three line segments, and line segment one is congruent to line segment two, and two is congruent to three, then the first and third one are congruent to each other. And then we have the substitution property of equality. If A is equal to B, then A can be used, can be substituted for B in any equation or equality. So if I tell you, for instance, that X equals five, then I can put five in for X any time I need to. The, distribu the distributive property, A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. That's just distribution. So now let's go back to this problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to write it as a proof. So the first thing that we always have to write is we have to write our statement. Our first statement is always going to be the thing that we are given. 
the problem that we have at the start. And we will say given because that's what it told us. Now, let's start with our first thing. 1 half x equals 1 half x because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move that half of an x over to the other side so that they're together. So I'm saying 1 half x equals 1 half x, and the reason why is reflexive, because that's what I'm moving. Meaning now, instead of 4x, 4x plus 1 half x gets us 9 halves x, plus 9x equals 18. So what I did was I added 1 half x to both sides, so that's the addition property of equality. Now, if I was solving this normally, the next thing I'd do is I'd subtract 9 from both sides. So I'm going to say 9 equals 9. That's reflexive, but then that gives us 9 halves x is now equal to 18 minus 9 is 9. So that was the subtraction property of equality. And the last thing I would do is I would end up, because 9 halves is being multiplied by x and I want x by itself, I divide by 9 halves or multiply by its inverse. So 9 halves equals 9 halves, that's reflexive, and I would say I divided so that's the division property of equality to get us to x equals 2. And that's how I would solve a proof like this one. All right, everyone, that's it for this one. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of those things. Be like the Hulk here and just smash. That's right. Thank you all very much. Have a great day.